currently you can run Next.js API routes as its functions. Yeah, apparently that's a thing now. But why would you? Well, the number one benefit that I can think of is speed, because the edge functions are run in the edge runtime, which is faster, it starts up faster than the default Node.js runtime. The edge runtime has its limitations. There are certain APIs that you can't use with edge runtime that you can use with the default Node.js runtime. And the other benefit is, well, to be honest, I can't think of any other benefits right now, but the speed for me is at least big enough to dig into this and see what it's all about. Because I'll take faster requests any time of the day. So let's hop to the computer and test it out and see if the Edge API routes are actually faster than the traditional API routes using the serverless functions. So the Edge runtime support for the Next.js API routes came out with the latest Next.js version, version 12.2, and they are in beta at the moment. And on top of the low latency, so the fast startup times and faster requests, we can actually see over here also that the uh, Edge API routes support also streaming responses from the server, which sounds pretty cool. In order to convert our API route to Edge function and to use the Edge runtime, all we have to do is this part over here. So we need to export a config variable with the runtime property set to experimental Edge. And that's it. And after that, if we want to return a response from the API, we can do it with the new response uh, syntax and then provide the response we want to return as a parameter. And if you want to check out more examples on these uh, Edge runtime API routes, uh, down here we have the check, do check the documentation site, which have a bunch of different examples on JSON response, cache control, query parameters, etc. So be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. But for us, what we want to do now is just test if these uh, API route edge functions, edge function API routes are faster than the traditional API routes. And as always on this channel, we take these kind of tests really seriously. So we want to make them very official and scientific. So the way we will test this right now is to create two API routes, one with the edge runtime and one with the Node.js runtime, and then just fire up a few requests with Postman and see which one on average is faster. I think that's official and scientific enough for us in this case. So let's get started. I'll create a new Next.js application and open it up right now. So here is a fresh Next.js project. I'll go to the pages and API folder. And right here we have the default hello API route. So this will be our API route number one. So this will be run with the default Node.js environment. And then let's create another one, call it hello edge, like this. And with this API route, we want to use the edge runtime. So let's add the config and I don't remember it. So let's copy it from the documentation like this, like this. And then we also probably need to modify this response. So I'll open up the documentation and I think there was this JSON return example over here. So yeah, over here. So I'll just copy this one from here and paste it inside our API route. And let's modify the return to match the John Doe over here. So we are as close as possible with the other API route like this. And then we just set the status 200 and the content to be application JSON. So with the edge runtime, we need to use this kind of syntax. So return a new response in order to return this JSON body. But I think that should be it. So we have the config variable over here with the experimental edge, and then we are just returning some JSON from there. So I'll save this. So now we have the hello and hello edge API functions ready. So the next thing we need to do is deploy this, and I will just deploy this to Vercel and I will get back to you once it's deployed. Okay, now it's deployed to Vercel. And by the way, if you are wondering how I did this, how to deploy an application to Vercel, I have a whole another video showing that, so be sure to check that out. But for now, let's 
try to test the API route out. So I'll just visit this page like this so I get the URL and then copy this and switch back to my uh, postman right here. Then I will create a new request and paste in the URL and it was API slash hello. So let's start with the first API route, which is the Node.js environment API route. So I'll execute. And the first request is always the slowest. So we can see over here. Let me check if I can make this bigger. Okay, now we can see the uh, request response over here and then the time over here. So let's fire this up a couple of more times so we get some idea what the average is. So 200, 500, 200, little under 200. Looks like the average time is around 200 milliseconds. Give it a take. Then let's try out the edge function API route. So it was dash edge and execute. The first request was 260. So that's usually the slowest one. So let's fire it up a couple of more times and keep an eye on this number over here. So it looks like on average we get under 100 milliseconds. So it's, I would say that it's at least twice as fast as the Node.js uh, API route or the API route that uses the Node.js environment. So yeah, there you go. That's how you make your API routes much uh, faster by converting them into edge functions. And of course, if you need some, uh, some of the APIs that are not available in the edge runtime, then you need to use the Node.js environment. But if you have API routes that don't use any of the APIs that are unavailable in the edge runtime, I think it's a good idea at least to think about converting them to use the edge runtime. But as said, the edge runtime API routes are still in beta, so be cautious where you use them. So I probably wouldn't use them in production just yet. Another important thing that came out with the Next.js 12.2 update was that middleware is out of beta, so it's stable now. And this introduced some breaking changes that you need to fix or uh, some things that you need to do in order to migrate to the new Next.js version if you are using middleware. So be sure to check out this video over here next so you won't break your middleware when you are upgrading the Next.js version in your application.